Can Aurora Cannabis really make you a millionaire? Is it a good time to invest in the stock? Is Aurora Cannabis stock a buy? Let's answer all those questions right now in today's deep dive video. Guys, as always, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and drop a huge like to support the channel. But getting right into it here, today we're gonna to talk about Aurora Cannabis. We're gonna be looking at their most recent earnings report and just go over the company and see if the stock is at a good valuation right now and if I would consider the stock a buy. So first, let's start off here as always with a company overview just to understand where this company stands. So just taken right from their earnings here, you can see that they're a leading global cannabis company by cultivation scale and revenue. They're a sector leader in technology across operations and product development. So these two points right here are just very big points that Aurora has over the competition. Like they say here, they are the leaders in the space, especially when it comes to revenue. And we'll get more into that in a few. They are active in five continents and 22 countries. Another huge point here for Aurora. They have leading medical market share in Europe and Latin America. So these two points right here show us just how global this company is and how much more potential they have as compared to some of the other competitors which are more North American driven. And then a couple other points here is that they have made 15 strategic acquisitions since 2016. So they're looking for companies to purchase smaller companies where they can grow up their business. And the last point that they make here is that they've served over 71,000 medical patients since they've started. So some pretty impressive numbers, some pretty impressive coverage here from the company. And as you can see from a couple of points that they make, they are well on track to being number one in terms of market cap as well at some point. But now getting more into the production numbers and growth, this is kind of an important aspect to look at, especially when you're looking at cannabis producers, because they're kind of judged on how much cannabis they're able to produce. And based on that, people go and project where the stock price will be in the future. So as you can see, they have 11 production facilities across Canada and Europe. And currently in early 2019, they plan to produce around 150,000 kilograms per year but by mid 2020 guys that's a year and a half or so away they plan to up this production to over 500,000 kilograms per year now if they're able to achieve this just think of the massive potential that they have because currently they are bringing in the most revenue compared to their competitors so if they hit these numbers by mid 2020 they're going to be far far ahead of the competition and on the far right here you can see patient cannabis production growth it's been growing steadily, grams produced has been increasing, and of course, as a result, the registered patients have been increasing as well. And now speaking of the competition here, we can see that their quarterly revenue growth based on the chart, Aurora is well ahead of its competition from its last quarter. It was behind one of its competitors, but has recently overtaken and is now in the number one spot. Now my assumption here with these two competitors would be Canopy Growth Corp as competitor number one, and most likely Afria as competitor number two. So as long as Aurora can continue on this trajectory, which it is possible based on their production numbers from mid-2020, they should be able to keep increasing the gap here between their competition. Next, of course, it's always good to look at what the analysts here think, uh, brought to you by tipranks.com, link in the description down below if you wanna check this out. But during the last three months, Aurora has had one analyst as bullish, two as neutral, and none as bearish. The average price target that analysts have set here is $9.80, which represents around a 30% upside from current prices. So although there isn't a lot of coverage on the stock, the few analysts that are covering it are fairly bullish compared to where the stock price is right now. So that's good news for current shareholders. Technicals is always something I like to look at and I think is very important, even if you're doing a long-term strategy, to help you kind of with entry and exit points. And as you can see, Aurora has pretty much been stuck in a channel between $5 and $8 for the last two quarters. And I think that's a good sign and shows signs of consolidation. And it's also above all of its moving averages currently, which is typically a healthy sign for a stock. And when consolidation happens above moving averages, typically that means that it's showing signs that it's ready to move higher in the near term. You'll also notice since the beginning of 2019, volume has been pretty high in this stock. And for the most part, the volume has been green. So that does show that there has been a lot of buying going on behind the ceilings here. And investors do see a lot of value here in loading up on current share price valuations. Now let's take a few minutes and just look at their fundamentals here. I mean, it's very difficult to judge a company like this based on its fundamentals because it's a growth driving company and it's not really fair to judge it based on fundamental stats. But nonetheless, let's take a look here. Aurora has a current PE of 35.09 and no four P projected. I was personally very surprised to see that the PE posted was a positive PE as most players in the space are very unprofitable and have no PE currently. Of course, Aurora does not currently pay out a dividend and I would not expect them to do so for many years if 
ever. Now Aurora is currently investing heavily in its production facility Aurora Sky which should be open soon and is kind of the main reason why this company has been eating a lot of losses in the last year or two. Now looking at their balance sheet which is very important for a company like this, cash and investments currently sit at just under 500 million dollars, 482 million to be exact. Debt is just over $200 million, $202 million to be exact. So the cash to debt ratio is actually a positive number here at 2.38. Now the concern here is that even though they have about half a billion dollars on hand, about $200 million of their $202 million in debt is long-term debt. Now that might not be really a concern today or for the short term, but eventually this debt needs to be paid off. So that is something that investors need to be aware of. And as they continue to expand and as they continue to grow out their facilities, they're going to be investing a lot more money into the business. And that debt load is most likely going to keep increasing. So I would keep a close eye on that cash balance to make sure that it does not drop below the debt level because that would be a massive red flag for me personally. And now we're getting into the fun stuff here, which is the numbers and growth. So I think out of all the companies we've covered so far on the deep dive, this may be one of the most red that I've ever seen in the percent growth year over year table. So congrats to Aurora on that achievement. Revenue has been increasing exponentially and will keep increasing at this rate as they expand Aurora Sky in my opinion. Operating income is growing year over year by huge triple digit numbers. Something to be cautious of as they continue to expand their business. Net income, however, was up in the last year, which is surprising, and they were able to grow 650% year over year, which is absolutely incredible growth for any company out there. Capital spending will also most likely continue to increase, in my opinion, you've seen it increasing in the last couple of years, as they continue to build out more facilities in the future. And this graph kind of shows us a visual of the data we just looked at. You can see that their capital spending is actually much more than their revenue currently. They're bringing in about 70 million in revenue, whereas their spending is close to $140 million. So that's something to be concerned about because if they keep spending too much, that's gonna add to the debt load and that's gonna affect their cash reserves. The operating income does continue to decrease. However, the net income, like we talked about, did increase proportionally to the capital spending from last year. So if they can continue on this trajectory and kind of turn that operating income more positive as well. Aurora might be able to turn a massive profit in the next couple of years with Aurora Sky. And that kind of brings us to this point, which I felt kind of obligated to include here because I just want to be fair to this company. Yes, there is some speculation involved in my opinion, but they do have a path of profitability that they've outlined. I think that it's important to look over this. So they've kind of broken down this path of profitability taken directly from their earnings over the near term, medium term, and long term. So let's see what they have to say about each one of these. Over the near term, they plan to drive down costs as production ramps up using massive scale. They plan to protect against eventual margin compression. They plan to invest heavily in R&D to create optionality. And what they want to do is also continue building out their brand with more high quality products. All pretty fair near term things to work on in my opinion. Now for the medium term, what they plan to do is they plan to focus more on their cash flow, especially from the Canadian market. They want to kind of leverage the R&D work in more higher margin products, which is smart to turn more of a profit. And the last point here is that they want to actually be more global and actually lead to more sales in global markets as well. Again, smart thinking by the management team here because there isn't a lot of companies that are attacking the global markets. And if they can be the number one player globally, that's going to be a huge benefit for them and shareholders. Finally, for the long term, what they want to do is have kind of a branded high margin product line that they can sell not only to their local Canadian consumers or North American consumers, but also to global markets as well, not only for medical, but also for recreational use. And they also plan to put more money into their R&D to support the development of even more innovative products and also for their brand. So I think that pretty much as a summary here, what we can understand from their vision, whether that's near term, medium or long term, is that they want to focus on their products, improving the quality, they want to focus on increasing profits, and they want to focus on improving their brand. All three things that I think are extremely important for any company, and I'm extremely thrilled that Aurora actually recognizes this and states these to their investors. But the real question we all came here for is, is Aurora Cannabis a buy here in 2019? So Aurora has grown from a company with absolutely no revenue just a few years ago to a company that's on track to pull in well over $100 million in revenue in 2019. They are in an industry that is considered extremely speculative and has a lot of eyes on it. And as a result, this is an extremely volatile stock. So if you're a brand new investor in the stock market, this may not be a stock that you may want to dabble in but this is not investment advice. You can do whatever you want with your money. They recently outpaced their competitors in the last quarter with revenue growth, which is a huge advantage to them over their competitors. 
Although they are increasing their debt load by building out facilities and investing in the business, they do have almost half a billion dollars in cash, which should help them get through any short-term turbulence in my opinion. The outline that we just went over on their path to profitability gives me confidence that the management team does have their head on their shoulders and has priorities set straight, which as an investor in the company is a lot more comforting than investing in a company that is losing millions of dollars with no solid plan. The stock performance like we looked at is in a consolidation period currently and may just be waiting for a catalyst here to actually boost it up to upwards of $10, $15 per share or higher. So overall, Aurora has proven that they are doing what they need to do to continue growing their business, continue expanding their market share, and continue expanding worldwide. Their goal is to be the number one player in this space in the near future by overtaking their competition and providing a better quality product. This company has a lot of potential for investors, but at best, in my opinion, I would consider Aurora Cannabis a buy as a speculative stock. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to share it with a friend and drop a huge like. If we can get, say, 200 likes on this video, I'll make another deep dive on Canopy. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to invest positively, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.